unless you hear about it from me or unless you read it in an official President Trump press release or unless you see it on Donald Trump's official truth social account, it is not yet confirmed information. And as we delve into appointment palooza, which has been going on for the last couple of days, as you start hearing these names pop up, know that a lot of them are still being discussed. Many of them have not yet been decided. Some people have not yet accepted the positions they've been offered. And there is still a lot of conversation going on at Mar-a-Lago with Donald Trump's inner circle. Having said that, there was one announcement yesterday that we know is official, and that is the appointment of Lee Zeldin, former New York State Congressman, to the role of EPA chief. Uh, in a statement, Donald Trump said, as the 45th and 47th president of the United States, I am pleased to announce that the highly respected former congressman from New York, Lee Zeldin, will be appointed to serve as the administrator of the United States Environmental Protection Agency. Lee, with a very strong legal background, has been a true fighter for America First policies. He will ensure fair and swift deregulatory decisions that will be enacted in a way to unleash the power of American businesses, while at the same time maintaining the highest environmental standards. Now, this is an interesting sentence for Donald Trump to include in this announcement, because he's saying not only is Lee Zeldin, who unsuccessfully ran for governor against Kathleen Hochul in 2020, but was very successful in bringing Republicans out to the polls and, and turning a lot of those blue districts in New York red, uh, Lee Zeldin is not just going to be in charge of environmental protection, but environmental protection deregulation. Because we all know the EPA regulates businesses to save the envir environment, but there's been a lot of there's been a lot of abuse of power. There's been a lot of overregulation, and uh, Donald Trump has made it a point of his campaign and his presidency and his future to bring down the size of the American government and deregulate some of these see, these industries so that our American economy can grow and thrive, and small and large businesses can do what they need to do to turn a profit and make sure the wheels of capitalism continue to spin without the government slamming the brakes on them. So that it seems like it's going to be uh, Lee Zeldin's job to go into the EPA and pull back all the regulations so that the economy can recover and actually soar. There's another announcement we've heard that we're very excited about, and that is President-elect Donald Trump picking GOP Representative Mike Waltz to be National Security Advisor. Again, no official word from the Trump administration yet, but because he's been asked, we feel like this is a confident pick. And it's a great pick as well, because we've been friends with Congressman Mike Waltz for a very long time. He's from here in Florida, District 6, which is the district that he uh, that, that uh, became open when Ron DeSantis ran for governor of Florida. A lot of high-profile conservatives coming out of Florida's 6th District. But Mike Waltz is a former Green Beret. He's actually the only former Green Beret to ever serve in Congress. As a result, he sits on the Armed Services Committee. He sits on the Foreign Affairs Committee. He's on the House Intelligence Committee. He was recently named to the Committee for Presidential uh, Assassinations. And that means his job is to oversee the FBI and make sure that as they investigate these presidential assassinations that have been happening way too often or presidential candidate assassinations at the time, uh, the FBI is doing their job and not hiding anything from the public. We uh, spoke with him just a couple of weeks ago and uh, Congressman Waltz mentioned how his training as a Green Beret gives him unique skills that he believes are very helpful, not just in Congress, but will be will be exceptionally great in his new role as National Security Advisor. Let's Green Berets are different in that we specialize in embedding with uh, our allies, uh, whether they be local tribes, partnered militaries, uh, uh, different militias that we, you know, we specialize in guerrilla warfare, unconventional warfare, gray zone, whatever label you want to put on it. We have to learn the local languages, blend in uh, and specialize in certain part of the world. And so in that environment, you, you definitely have a different way of thinking, different way of approaching problems. And I tell I talk to, you know, uh, the reader about engaging with local militias. And some of these warlords would soon turn their guns and kill us <laughs> as they would the bad guys. <laughs> right. uh, I don't have any authority over them. I'm in the middle of nowhere with a bag of cash and a, and a rifle. Um, but if I can build those coalitions, what we call buy with and through, and get them to buy into our vision, America's interest, and do the job for us, rather than having 10,000 U.S. boots on the ground, yeah. you got 10,000 locals, I can deal with the tribes of Congress. 
This is a guy who not only will be very helpful to the president of the United States in navigating all of these uh, national security issues, but will also be be very beneficial to our troops and our men and women in the uh, in the armed services because he was one of them and he knows exactly what they go through. We also heard about Stephen Miller returning to the White House. Stephen Miller was a, a senior advisor to President Trump the first time around, really was one of the architects of his immigration policy and will be returning as Deputy Chief of Staff. Again, this is an unofficial announcement, um, but we have word that Donald Trump has chosen Stephen Miller to be Deputy Chief of Staff in charge of domestic policy, and that means immigration. He was very successful the first time around, and having that experience, we imagine Stephen Miller will work closely with the Chief of Staff, Susie Wiles, and we believe that he will work closely with the Department of Homeland Security, ICE, Tom Homan. As you can see, once again, we're starting to see that Donald Trump's uh, priorities, again, lie on immigration and making sure that his immigration hawks, the people who are hardliners on protecting this country and its borders, are put in place first and are working together to get the job done. Now, one of the, the biggest names and one of the biggest things we heard yesterday coming out, and this is totally unconfirmed, is that Marco Rubio will be named Secretary of State. That could come as soon as today. It could come later in the week. Um, Marco Rubio was on a short list of candidates that included Rick Grinnell. We talked about that. Uh, Bill Haggerty from Tennessee. And the surprise pick, Vivek Ramaswamy. Marco Rubio seems to have risen to the top of that list, maybe because we remember in Pennsylvania, Marco Rubio was the guy that came on stage and alerted Donald Trump to the fact that Joe Biden had just called all of his supporters garbage, which led to one of the biggest and best campaign promotions of all time. And that was Donald Trump driving a trash truck with an orange vest on to the Milwaukee, Wisconsin rally where he stood on stage and delivered uh, delivered his speech, but Marco Rubio has been a, you know, a very interesting. He's been a, he's been a staunch supporter of Donald Trump's policies. He definitely is a, a c concerned about China and has touted the the uh, dangers of China more so than really any senator that I can remember. He's against continued action in in Ukraine, and his foreign policy seems to meld perfectly with Donald Trump's and. We mentioned yesterday, ever since 2016, when President Trump beat Marco Rubio in the Florida primary, which, look, if you're a senator from Florida and you're running for president and you lose to someone in the primary, a lot of politicians would be angry about that. A lot of politicians would say, well, that does it. I'm never supporting this guy. Not Marco Rubio. Marco Rubio saw it differently. Marco Rubio said, I'm a senator from Florida. People in Florida support Donald Trump. My constituents want Donald Trump to be president. As their representative, I will work with Donald Trump to make sure that his agenda, which is the desired agenda of the people that I represent, goes through. And he's done a brilliant job. He's become a, 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 a lieutenant in Donald Trump's kind of army, uh, MAGA army, and it looks like it's going to pay off if this comes true. Now, keep in mind, these are unofficial announcement, announcements, and Marco Rubio may or may not be the Secretary of State. This could be this could be you know the Trump administration floating some ideas out there to see what the response is. Uh, Donald Trump has been known to fluctuate until the very last minute. The J.D. Vance vice presidential pick, which by the way, vice president, that's one of the biggest decisions a presidential uh, campaign and candidate is going to make. And as we recall, that decision was made 100% the morning of. And, uh, and we saw how that turned out. It was a great decision. So Donald Trump's going to take his time. And when he's ready, he will announce Secretary of State. The early rumblings are that that job will go to Florida Senator Marco Rubio. Another one that we're hearing about, and this is unconfirmed, is ex-defense official Cash Patel emerging as a top contender for the CIA. Pretty unsurprising that Cash Patel would find a high-profile job in President Trump's second administration. Cash Patel is a key uh, national security uh, um, official here in the United States of America. He's worked at the CIA. He's worked at the National Security Council. He was the deputy, or he was the chief of staff, rather, at the Defense Department. He knows the inner workings of the Pentagon, of the National Security Council. He knows exactly what needs to be done to, to rid the world of these terrorist threats and to save the United States of America. Um, and he's also he's also an author. He wrote a book called Government Gangsters, The Deep State, The Truth and the Battle uh, for Our Democracy. And this is a book that is all about I mean, this book is all about rooting out 
the deep state. This book is all about getting to the core of the Washington bureaucrats who have run the joint forever. If Donald Trump's going to drain the swamp, he's going to need Cash Patel in some aspect of that of that draining of that government. And Cash Patel as CIA director would be a fantastic choice if it 100% is accurate. If that is something that we're, we're, if that's a rumbling or something that we hear is going to come up, then that's going to be great for the United States of America. Again, it could be FBI. Remember, the FBI is also on the top of Donald Trump's poop list, we'll call it. And Donald Trump knows that he wants, he, Donald Trump wants massive, he wants massive purging of government bureaucrats and deep state operatives in every single agency, law enforcement agency, government agency, the DOJ, the CIA, the FBI, the IRS, any of these agencies are going to benefit from a hardline anti-big government deep state destroyer like Cash Patel. So we know he's going to be somewhere, somewhere. We're just not 100% sure where that is yet. Now, just before I sat down to record, there was another uh, rumor that popped up. A lot of people were reporting this. I saw it on CNN and a couple of other news sources that North Dakota governor, pardon me, South Dakota governor Kristi Noem will be tapped as Department of Homeland Security secretary. This is a big deal. This is a big role. One of the biggest roles in President Trump's new government. This is something that we'd all been wondering about after the immense failure of Alejandro Mayorkas, the only de uh, defense secretary, I'm sorry, the Homeland Security Secre Secretary to ever be impeached by the Congress after the massive influx of illegal immigrants and drugs and gangs and criminals and human traffickers, after just the, the arrogance with which Alejandro Mayorkas goes to Congress and discusses his failures as if they're massive wins and as if the rest of the country is supposed to believe that this guy's actually doing something. This is this is a huge pick. And choosing Christy Noem as Homeland Security Secretary is interesting for a couple of reasons. Number one, we know she is a staunch Donald Trump MAGA conservative. We know she comes from the blood red state of South Dakota. We know that she is a hardliner. We know that she was on the short list for the vice presidency. She was almost Donald Trump's uh, second on the ticket. There was an unfortunate incident where the media blew out of proportion a, a portion of her book um, about, a, uh, about a dog. We won't get into that. But now it seems like she's going to be elevated to yet another high-profile cabinet position. And again, these departments are going to work together to solve America's problems like never before. I mean, home, Homeland Security with Kristi Noem is going to work directly with uh, Tom Homan, who is now going to be the border czar, it's going to work directly with Stephen Miller, the deputy chief, uh, White House chief of staff. They're going to work directly with all the other agencies to make sure that these illegal immigrants are caught, that they're returned home, and that the border is secure. And it's it's really an interesting team that Donald Trump seems to be putting together. The, 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 the deep concepts or the threads, the common threads that run through all of these picks are that they are people that are highly conservative, have been loyal to Donald Trump, that we've seen in Donald Trump's orbit, that we've seen with Donald Trump on the campaign, that we've seen on television fighting and being surrogates for Donald Trump during the campaign and during his presidency. And all of them, all of them have this kind of hardline look at border issues, immigration, and the military. So very excited. Again, once, once these picks become official, it looks like Donald Trump is truly putting together a MAGA dream team for the United States of America so that he can get things, not just get things done, but get things done quickly. And again, we'll be following all of this information. And as soon as it becomes true and accurate, we will bring it to you. Now, there's one more story I did want to share with you. And this is regarding President Trump's wife, uh, Melania, first lady elect. Would she be first lady elect or... Eh, for, Former and future First Lady Melania Trump. Melania Trump was invited to the White House by Jill Biden, Dr. Jill Biden. Now, this is typical and traditional. Donald Trump, the president-elect, will be meeting with Joe Biden, the current president, tomorrow at the White House. And we mentioned in yesterday's show how that transition meeting isn't going to be your typical transition meeting. Donald Trump has been president before. There's nothing Joe Biden needs to or can tell him or instruct him that Donald Trump doesn't already know. In fact, if Joe Biden told Donald Trump anything about being president, I'm pretty sure Donald Trump would just laugh it off and uh, and go back to doing business the way that he knows 
how to do it. But the first ladies also have a traditional meeting as well. And Melania Trump was invited by Jill Biden to the White House and turned down the meeting. She turned it down. And we're getting reports from, uh, it looks like the New York Post, the reason that Melania Trump, future first lady, turned down the meeting at Mar-a-Lago with Jill, I'm sorry, at the White House with Jill Biden is because of the Mar-a-Lago raid. Melania Trump declines to meet with Jill Biden at White House, citing Mar-a-Lago raid. Melania Trump declined an offer to head to the White House Wednesday and meet with Jill Biden, citing the Biden administration's raid on Mar-a-Lago as part of the federal government's investigation into classified documents. She ain't going, a source familiar with Melania's decision told The Post. Jill Biden's husband authorized the FBI snooping through her underwear drawer. The Bidens are disgusting, the source said. Jill Biden isn't someone Melania needs to meet. The source added, so Jill Biden married to Joe Biden, who orchestrated and executed a raid on Mar-a-Lago during which FBI officials went through her unmentionables, rifled through her underwear and then left, has now invited Melania Trump to the White House. And she has said, no, thank you, lady. I want absolutely nothing to do with you. That is that is very exciting news, and that is the right choice. And I'm thrilled to see that this staunch combative conservatism isn't just in the presidency and the vice presidency and the cabinet, but also with Melania Trump, the former and future first lady of the United States of America. Now, there's a lot of other news of the day to cover. There's a lot of other stuff that we need to get through. And at noon today, we'll be publishing our commentary podcast, Mark K., saves the republic which you can find on itunes or or spotify or wherever else you get your podcast we will keep watching the trump administration the transition team will keep you updated and informed with all of the news coming out of mar-a-lago make sure you're subscribed to this podcast because we are we are just getting started after the next 70 days we've got donald trump's first 100 days and then the second trump presidency all four years we will be here letting you know what donald trump is up to what he's doing what his plans are, what he's accomplished, and how he will work to make America great again.